Hey there, measurement ladies and gentlemen. Do you know that now you can create your custom funnels in explorations in GA4 and add them to your standard reports? We also have a new report called User Purchase Journey. Enough talking, let's have a look at it together. What is a funnel? It lets you visualize the steps your users take to complete a task, for example, on a way to purchase. Why is it so important? It helps you identify the weak points. Where can we put our attention to get the most results if we want to improve that point? For example, many users drop off at the Add to Cart tab. No! Well, maybe we should include a testimonial, some social proof, as well as product images. We should get rid of all bugs and glitches to make it mobile responsive. Well, this is where funnels come to your rescue because they help you spot those weaknesses. And I'm in the demo account right now, and I encourage you to use it as a trading station to test things out, to explore new features and new things. And before we start, I want to show you a new report introduced in GA4. So we should go to reports, and it was introduced as a part of standard reports, as you can see, that are pre-built reports in the tool. And here we go to monetization, and this is where we can find the user purchase journey. Hmm, let's have a look at it, at this brand new report. It shows you how many users drop off between each step in your purchase funnel. Step number one, which is session store, then we can see step number two, view product, step number three, add to basket, begin checkout and purchase. And these steps are based on the e-commerce events implemented on your website. If we scroll down, you can also see this classical table where you can find the breakdown of each step by device categories of your users. And you can also change this dimension. Let's say you want to look at countries. So you want to add a different breakdown and this is how you do it. Unfortunately, I have some bad news here. At least for now, you cannot modify the steps here. So we cannot change the conditions anyhow. But if you want to do it, you would have to create a custom funnel. Yes, sir. And this is doable with the help of explorations. And we will do it together. So we are going now to the explore section. And this is where you can build your custom report. And I will start from scratch, selecting the blank option. And we want to create a funnel, right? So this is why I'm going to this technique section and I will select the funnel exploration. So we want to work with this technique. And here we go. So the backbone of any funnel is defining the steps. I'm working with a demo account, just to remind you. And there is a real website here with the data flowing to this demo account. So that GA4 is installed on this website. And I want to define the sales funnel here yeah, because this is an e-commerce store. So let's have a look. For example, if I want to buy this product, I can go and have a look at it. I can add this product to cart. I click add to cart. And here we can go to the shopping cart. And as you can see, the URL changes. We have this basket.html and I will not go through the whole funnel, but I'm pretty sure you definitely know the steps because you buy many things in line and this is how you do it. And each time the URL changes in this case. So let's go back to GA4 and I know all the steps already. So I will not make a test purchase now. All right, so we want to define our steps and I have to tell you that you can define any steps you want. And this is the beauty of GA4. You remember that everything is an event and it gives us so much flexibility. And this is why also this feature is a considerable advantage compared to universal analytics. But in our case, you remember this URL and I will use something called 
page location and I can add a filter and specify a condition and I will say contains basket.html and we can also call our step, let's say it's card, right? Makes sense. So this is our step number one. The second step is where users add their information. So we can add it and we can call it info as an example. And again, the condition, page, location, and we can add a filter. And here we go. Our third step is payment. So let's add it here and we can call it also payment. And again, we say page location and we add a filter and we say payment. And here on the right side, you can see the lower number of users because we are kind of filtering them down, right? And I will define also the steps for review order and order completed. And voila, so let's have a look here. You can see a low number of users because we have defined our steps. And before we visualize those steps, I want to show you a few things here. Specifically, we have this option to select is indirectly followed by or is directly followed by. Let's say users might click somewhere else on the way to the next step and they do not have to follow the steps strictly. This is where you will select is indirectly followed by. But if you want your user to go from card to the info section, straight away, you would have to select is directly followed by. I will select the first option here because I give my users freedom and flexibility. Then we have the time constraint. So you can also place it here and you can define your condition so you can change it. Let's say you give your users five minutes to go from card to the info step. So this is how it works. I will deselect it and let's hit apply. And voila, here we go. I'm excited to see the output. So this is our beautiful funnel. And now we can start collecting insights. Let me show you a few more things here because now we can also select the visualization method. This is the standard funnel. But what will happen if I select trend funnel? Let's have a look. And now we can analyze the steps simultaneously in the all section, or we can also look at some specific step. So this can be really helpful. Let me change back to the standard funnel. You can also make your funnel open. What does it mean? So this means that your users can enter at any point. So they can start with any step, but I will change it back. Of course, you can also work with segments to look at the subsets of data. Here are our steps. We can also add a breakdown. Let's say I want to have a browser as a breakdown. We have to go to the dimensions. And here I will look for browser because it's not there. I will select it and I have to import it, right? And now it's here and I will simply drag and drop. And here we go. So now we can also see the browsers and you can perform your analysis. I will remove it for now. We also have something called show elapsed time. And this is the average time between the steps. But to be honest, I'm not sure if this number is really reliable because it seems to be a sum of time. I'm not sure, but it would be great to have this data available. Okay, then we also have something called next action. So if you want to see the common user actions that follow each funnel step, you can also add it. But 
In this case, we can only add event name or page screen as a dimension. It makes sense. So let's say I want to look at event name. I'm just curious. So I will select this one. I have to import it. And now we can drag and drop it here. And now I can hover my mouse over each step and you can see the top five next actions. So it might be really valuable for your analysis. Then we have filters. Let's say you want to look at the data for the users coming from Canada. How can I do it? I will have to add a country as a dimension because it's not here. So I click plus and we look for the dimension called country. Let's click import. And now you don't have to add it anywhere. So it will not be displayed in the output, but we can go to filters. And if we click here, you can see country and we say filter exactly matches, for example, and we can type Canada and it will show up. Let's select it and let's hit apply. And now we're looking at this funnel, but for users from Canada, which is really interesting. So this is how you can also filter your data to gain insights and imagine that I configure this in my own property because in the demo account, I do not have the permissions to modify it. But just imagine that this is exactly the funnel we have just created. And here you can see this magical symbol. We can save our funnel as a report in the library. This is exciting. So if I click here, we can also provide the name Let's call it just for the demonstration purposes, my ecom funnel. You can also add the description test and let's save it. And now let's see what happens. So exploration saved. But if I go to my reports, let's have a look and I go to monetization. It's not there. What should I do? We should go to library because it is not enough to create a report. We also have to add it to our collection. And here you can see my report, it's here on the list, but I have to add it somehow. And this is where you can find the life cycle. So this is exactly this collection. And I click edit collection. And let's look for my wonderful report here. And I can see it, my econ funnel and I can simply drag and drop it. Voila. And let's save it to the current collection. And now we can have a look together. I'm really excited about the changes. Monetization, my e-commerce funnel. So what happened here? We created a funnel as the custom report and explorations, and then we added it to our collection of standard reports, which is really interesting and it makes a lot of sense. Let's say now we can create custom reports and explorations and then we can quickly access them in the standard reports. Well, it would be great, but this feature is available for funnels only, at least on the day of this recording. Have you tested it out already? Let me know in the comment sections.